and we understand China's motivations. It wants to be a superpower. It is a compulsive bully. We also understand Pakistan's machinations. It wants to hurt India. It is a perpetual nuisance. But what about Nepal? What does Nepal want? And why is it doing what it's doing? Nepal's brinkmanship is becoming more dangerous. Anti-India sentiments have been running high and the Prime Minister himself is fueling these sentiments. He has repeatedly blamed Indians for bringing the Wuhan virus to his country. Mr. Oli says 85% of coronavirus cases in Nepal came from India and today we saw the result of such dangerous rhetoric. An Indian citizen has lost his life. He was killed by the armed police force of Nepal, the APF. This happened at the Lal Mandi Jankinagar border in the Sitamari district of Bihar. Nepalese forces say a group of Indians was forcefully trying to enter their country, so they resorted to firing. India says this version is being investigated. Nepal APF, uh, as it is alleged, and it is said uh, by Nepal APF people, that uh, they objected to this, saying that uh, the lockdown in Nepal con uh, continues up to 14th of June, so they wanted him to go away. This led to some altercation, avoidable altercation, I will say, because this was completely local issue that generated from an instant altercation. It is being alleged by Nepal APF that uh, all the villagers became aggressive and uh, they had to open fire, 15 rounds of fire. 10 rounds were fired in the air and this, uh, the villagers are saying that uh, they got aggressive. Nepal APF got aggressive, they fired. So this is our version and counter version. That is subject matter of investigation. An avoidable altercation. How many more we ask? In how many forms? At what expense? Look at the timing of this avoidable altercation. It comes in the middle of another provocation. Nepal is altering its map. On Saturday, Nepal's parliament will hold a special session. It will vote on a constitutional amendment for Nepal's new map. A house meeting has been scheduled. In other words, the Nepal government is busy altering maps in the middle of a pandemic and the people of Nepal are protesting against their government, against Prime Minister Oli's misplaced priorities. There have been large-scale demonstrations. On Thursday, thousands hit the streets of Kathmandu for a peaceful protest. And this was the second protest in a week. These people are demanding financial transparency. They are demanding better management of the pandemic. Prime Minister K.P. Oli's attempts at blaming India for the Wuhan virus are clearly not working with his own people. As for the border dispute, India has repeatedly conveyed its openness to dialogue. But Nepal seems to be in a hurry. This dispute is not new. Neither is the road over which Nepal is upset. So why has an old border dispute with a friendly neighbor become so politically charged in the middle of a pandemic in Nepal? Let me revisit some questions to break it down. Question number one, did India build a road through Nepalese territory? I'm talking about the Lipu Lake Pass and the answer is no. India says it built a road on its own side of the border. The project has been in public domain since 2008. And the area of Lipu Lake has been in Indian possession for more than 60 years. The construction of a road by India in this region is not an extraordinary or unprecedented change in the status quo. India has invested in infrastructure projects here before. And China too has recognized India's sovereignty here in the past. In 2015, an India-China joint statement agreed to expand bilateral trade through the Lipu Lake Pass, since Nepal takes China's word so seriously, it should read this. On what basis then is Nepal trying to claim this territory? Nepal gives two reasons. One is a census that the Nepal government conducted in the 1950s. And the second is a treaty signed in 1815, the Sugoli Treaty. So here's the next question. Is Nepal acting at China's behest? China is known to use India's neighbors as proxies. Young and unstable democracies in political transition are an easy target for Beijing. China also has a history of meddling in Nepal's internal affairs. The Chinese ambassador is said to have mediated between the warring factions of the ruling party, the Nepal Communist Party. China interferes. Beijing has also put pressure on critical reporting by the Nepalese media. The Nepal government did not even protest. We did. China's political influence has definitely grown in Nepal and India is aware of this. New Delhi has expressed its displeasure over Nepal's actions, but has largely remained guarded on the issue. So here's what we say. Patience is not always a virtue. Sometimes it's mistaken as weakness. 
This has been going on for more than a month now. It's time to set the record straight with Nepal.